Hey, cats, what's happening? You know what this means, don't you? More salt on the road. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not riding weather. You know, last week we were up in the 60s. And my brother was out riding, and he texted me and said, Hey, you know, let's, let's catch up. do some riding today and I said uh, oh sorry but I'm not taking my bike out because the roads still have salt on them and he kind of blew me off like that ah, you know because it it had been maybe a couple of weeks since it had snowed last but we had no rain to wash the salt off the roads so that was kind of my thing I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until you know we get some good rains to flush the salt off the roads. The temperatures go up, then I'll ride, but not until then. So anyway, my brother um, had a Super Bowl party, and uh, I went to the party. Now he's got a real big shop. It, it's a it's a pretty big facility. It's uh, the the shop area is huge, and he's got his a bunch of motorcycles in there he's got his motorcycle they have uh so so anyway his motorcycle was sitting there and i i went to the the uh super bowl party and we were talking about that and he was saying ah oh, there wasn't much salt on the road what are you talking about so i go over to his bike and i took my finger and i wiped it on the fender <laughs> and there was white salt on my finger and I said, uh, if you don't believe me, taste it. It's salt. And he was actually taken back. He didn't realize that that salt had attached, you know, like statically, the salt dust had attached to his bike like that. So uh, he said, wow. He said, I'm going to have to... Uh, uh, give this a second thought from here on out <laughs> as to how and when I ride. So it was interesting. He has a, a bunch of pit bikes. I don't know if you know what a pit bike is. Um, basically about the size of my mini bike, but they're motocross bikes. And they're, they're I think they're made for kids. They, they you know, like a, like a 100cc or 125cc um, some of them a little less, depending on what you get. But what they do is they, you can get them relatively affordable. And so they'll buy the, these, these pit bikes and then they modify them, uh, to where they're, it can be used more for an adult rather than a child. And so, uh, you know, what happens then when his crews come back at the end of the day, and there's a lot of younger guys that work for him. Uh, they'll, he's got a lot of property there around his company too. And so they have trails going down through the woods and, and down into the ravine and back up again. And the boys will get on the pit bikes and they'll race around the, uh, the trails there at his company. Pretty proud of my younger youngest brother. He's done very well for himself. Although, you know, he's been through some, some terrible struggles uh he's managed to pull himself back up again and keep on going and, and he's he's doing very well right now he's building a, an electric uh racing go-kart it's pretty incredible uh he was able to buy a frame online for relatively cheap and really not really knowing what he was getting into, uh, turns out it's a professional racing frame for a go-kart. And he made some modifications to it, put an electric motor on it instead of a gas motor. And uh, he's still building it right now. He hasn't finished it up yet. But when he's done, this thing is going to rip. I mean, it's going to be fast. Um, my phone is like blowing up this morning. I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, I'm getting all kinds of text messages and and who knows what. 
anyway you know back to that I'm looking forward to seeing this thing when it's done uh, where he's gonna run it at I don't know I mean it'll be it you'll be able to, to, to take it out on the street but I don't know that it's legal to run on the street his shop is big enough that he can put you know an oval track inside his shop uh, there's quite a bit of square footage there uh, in the shop floor if he kind of clears some things out and moves some some racks out of the way uh, they'll be able to make a, an indoor track uh, so that'll be interesting it'll be fun probably scary too <laughs> and looking at my messages my brother just texted me you know my mom passed away a few weeks back and uh, one of my mother's best friends came to the funeral little old lady uh, she was uh, walking on her own and I recognized her right away my mom's best friend and uh, it, it was just a joy to see her again well the text messages that just came in was that she passed away this week <laughs> and she's not with my mom in heaven it's just incredible you know that I mean she wasn't in a nursing home or anything uh, she was up walking around and and appeared to be healthy for her elderly age but apparently uh, the Lord took her up so now they're all together my mom my dad and my mom's best friend crazy well it's Saturday morning and I've got my routines that I do every Saturday and the first thing I have to do is water plants I've got a lot of Val's plants I've got this African violet here that's it never blossoms I don't know what I need to do to to get it to blossom I I did buy some uh, some miracle grow flower food bloom booster uh, but even though I've used that, I still don't get any blossoms on the thing. And I, I was told by her, you always water it at the bottom. You never pour water in the top on an African violet. I don't know why. Her Christmas cactus, and this thing looks a little wilty, so I'm not sure if it needs to be repotted. It does have some nice new growth on it, though, on some of the stems. But uh, I'm going to have to take a look at that. And then I've got this... Uh, ivy there there's english ivy growing up here and then there's this other kind of ivy here that's stringing up <laughs> growing everywhere i've also got this mother-in-law's tongue that i repotted uh and it's starting to come back but it should get humongous and that's why i put that there i've got the spider plant up there that really loves it a lot better outside in the summertime. It'll flourish in the summertime, and then I bring it in and I put it up there, and it struggles through the winter because it it just doesn't quite get the light that it needs. Uh, and then I think maybe the heat from the wood burner might affect it a little bit up there too. Uh, but it's like right across from the skylight. See, my skylights are covered with snow today. I've got another plant up here that I water. And then if we head to the back bedroom. Some of these go outside in the summer. This fern will go outside in the summer. Uh, it's doing real well in here. The cactus will go outside in the summer. And then I've got these three. Here's another little miniature English ivy that kind of growing on a heart-shaped uh, wire thing there. And some, I don't know what these, I think that's a uh, it's kind of a strawberry, uh, from what she told me it was called. Uh, I don't know, it has these really long tendrils that it puts out with leaves on it. So I've got to water those this morning.
and in this other back bedroom I have used a, a little piece of her Christmas cactus and started a new one and there's also uh, a uh, lily that comes up here and uh, it'll it it just will bloom in the summer and then I've got another spider plant here that's never put out any you know spider tendrils it it just kind of you know stays a little there in the window and it's, it seems to be happy as we come up here into the loft I've got two rubber trees this one that hangs over I I had to cut it back cuz I mean it was it was hanging over the th railing so heavy that it was pulling the pot over uh, so I pruned it up and it seems to kind of be stunted right now to a degree this one however is not stunted at all and it's constantly having to be pruned back because being here in front of the the, the big window it gets so much sunlight it thrives so it it shoots out these big long branches that uh, it, it grows crazy and it, it takes almost a whole gallon of water every week it, dr it drinks a lot of water here but uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing but uh, it's a beautiful plant but the more I keep hacking away at it, it's not as pretty as it once was. And then let's see. I have one more little vine thing over here, which I just clipped back because it was growing all the way up here. And it was growing all the way across that saw. And uh, it, it got to a point where uh, it started to die back because it was just, there was just too much it couldn't uh, it couldn't feed itself anymore I guess so that those are all my plants that I have and uh, I'll mix up some miracle grow and get them watered today and hopefully they stay healthy this past week was Valentine's Day which was uh, February 14th and it fell on a Wednesday but 14 years ago it fell on a Sunday and on that Sunday Val and I were married now we'd been together for a total of 22 years but we were only married 14 years so Wednesday was kind of special uh, it was it was a nice day and I, I, I did okay. I did okay. I mean, you know, people tend to take holidays or, or special events like that. And, and, you know, when you lose someone that you love, you tend to, to like, focus on those. Like, oh, I'm going to be really bummed out and depressed today because this is the day that this happened or this is the day. And, and I don't feel that way. To me, it was almost I, I won't say a celebration but there were good memories of you know days that I had with her in our and and looking back at our at our marriage and and what a wonderful thing we had so yeah the the uh, that would have been our 14th anniversary uh, last week and uh, I ended up going to a, a grief support uh, group uh, there's a place maybe about 25 miles from here. It takes me about 45 minutes to get there. It's a uh, like a cancer center, like a, a, not a hospital or anything. It's it's more like a support center. Beautiful place, big facility, and they have all kinds of different things there for people that are suffering with cancer. And so. Uh, one of the programs that they offered was uh, grief support. Now, how did I get back with that? Well, when I was looking for a place to donate Val's wigs, and she had a whole bunch of wigs, and some of them were like brand new. 
uh, somebody suggested we'll take him to this Stewart's caring place. So I took him there, and they said, you know, since your wife passed away from cancer, you're eligible to all of our programs here, and we do have a grief support. So I thought, okay, well, I'll do it. You know, I mean, what, what can it hurt, you know? Do I need grief support? I don't know. Probably not, because I, I'm pretty strong uh, person emotionally. So, uh, you know, I know some people take things like that much harder. But anyway, I went to the grief support. The first time I went, uh, it was pretty nice. Uh, it was mostly women there, which, you know, was fine with me. Uh, but there was one other fellow there that I got to know. Uh, I went a second time, and it was helpful to me. And I think not only helpful to me, but it was it, that I was able to talk a little bit about my experience and to, to help other people too. So not only was it is it healing to me, but what I have to share is healing to others. So I went again on Wednesday, my anniversary, and I was the only guy there. There's five women there. <laughs> and uh, we had a good session uh, of sharing and just, uh, you know, talking about we, where we're at and, and how things are going with us. And then two of the ladies invited me out to dinner that evening. So that was my my Valentine's Day anniversary. Uh, they celebrated with me by taking me out to dinner at the Cracker Barrel, which turned out to be a wonderful time. It was a, it was a lot of fun uh, just hanging out with these ladies and and just enjoying a little slice of life together. Well, thank you guys for all your support and your prayers. I will continue to pray for each one of you and uh, keep you in my heart. Uh, I love all you guys, and I appreciate you very much. Give me that thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe and, and uh, hang out with me for this ride. Till next time, cats, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>